Dear all, this is the third audio recap, a summary of the International Business Law Lectures by Dr. Marco Akami at the European Law School Bachelor's course of the Maastricht University. This is a summary of the third lecture of the course. It's meant to be a brief overview, which does not replace the attendance to the lectures or the tutorials, the reading of the course reader and of the recommended literature therein. Please mind also that for your memorandum and mock arbitration strategy, you are required to cite all relevant articles, which for the sake of time are not always mentioned in this recording. In week three, we continue analyzing the CISG and discuss some controversial, mind-blowing concepts. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. These concepts were consideration and causa, nachfrist, good faith, battle of the forms, efficient breach, punitive damages and disgorgement, and finally, statute of frauds. These concepts give rise to discussion in the context of the CISG because they are traditional of certain specific jurisdictions. For example, while you'll find consideration typical from the common law systems, you'll find nafrist and causa typical of civil law systems. The CISG rejects both consideration the quid pro quo between the parties to a contract, as causa, the purpose of such contract, as necessary conditions for its validity, in order to keep the support for all countries, including those who do not have these features in their own jurisdictions. However, the same concern did not seem to be there when the drafters of the CISG included nachfrist and good faith. Indeed, the CISG gives the seller an additional time to perform, after which termination is possible even in the absence of a fundamental breach. The adoption of Nachfrist serves pacta sunt servanda, but perhaps not so much the principle of legal certainty. Additionally, Article 7 incorporates the principle of good faith, or the need of parties to treat each other in a fair and reasonable manner, thus making civil law prevail over common law here, as the latter does not admit it. Another issue which is quite debatable in the context of the CISG is that of the battle of the forms. This occurs when in the formative phase of a contract, buyer and seller incorporate their standard terms into the contract and only realize they say different things when there is a dispute about a given issue and after the contract has actually already been validly concluded. It is argued that the CISG addresses the issue of the battle of the forms and its general rules on formation of contract, namely through the combination of Articles 6, 18 and 19. The CISG follows the widespread rule that an acceptance must unequivocally and in principle without modification express consent to the offer. This is called the mirror image principle. But if we read further under Article 19 of the CISG, we will see that a contract is only concluded if one party gives in and it does something which expresses consent without no longer sending or otherwise relying on the own standard terms. This seems to be an adoption of the last shot rule. Other jurisdictions deal with this problem in a different manner, such as by adopting the first shot rule or the knockout rule. As a rule, any deviation from the contents of the offer makes an acceptance, a rejection, and a counter-offer. This counter-offer requires itself acceptance, which can and often will occur in that the other party merely starts performance, 
that is to say, dispatch of the goods or payment of the price. But in the absence of any express or implied acceptance, no contract is concluded. Indeed, the mere silence or inactivity is not sufficient to be bring a contract about. The next set of concepts are actually closely intertwined. We are talking here of efficient breach, punitive damages, and disgorgement. Imagine that Pasticcino is a small, centenary Sicilian bakery based in Acireale. This bakery is known in the region for producing the most traditional, freshest and tastiest cannoli in Catania. This bakery lives from the day-to-day -day selling as well as to a once-a-year expert of 500 cannolis to Croatia at one euro each for the International Simi Industrial Pastry Fair in May that are always paid in advance in January each year. A pregnant princess one night watching an episode of her favorite series, The Sopranos, suddenly has an unstoppable desire for a cannoli. She googles best traditional cannoli from Sicily and encounters the fax number of Pasticcino. She immediately requests that until the term of her pregnancy, the bakery Pasticcino should become their exclusive and royal cannoli suppliers. Pasticcino's owners, the brothers Walter and Pietro, cannot believe in the facts they receive, which read, the queen would like to bring to your consideration her invitation to become the exclusive royal cannoli suppliers until July 2018. The price which you settled will be paid. Pietro and Walter immediately warn Lovro, the buyer in Malta, or better said in Croatia, that they will no longer perform and therefore he should find another provider of cannoli. Lovro threatens to bring them an action in court to which Pietro and Walter said, and sue us. We do not care. We are royal servants now, and we are charging our majesty five euros per cannoli. If we were to consider that under Article 74 of the CISG, Lovro from Croatia would be entitled to approximately the price of the cannolis that were not delivered to him, we could speak of an efficient breach, as the cost of the damages is lower than that what would have cost to Pietro and Walter not to perform to the princes. Punitive damages is a kind of damages which is aimed at deter efficient breaches by forcing the defendant to pay additional damage to that which the claimant in fact suffered. That can be the profit which was made out of the breach, in which case we talk of disgorgement. Now very briefly on Brussels recast one. This set of rules has its scope of application in Articles 1 and 2. Article 25 is quite important because it shows how it preserves party autonomy as far as the choice of forum is concerned. Every time the parties do not choose a forum, and in cases involving a contract, Article 7 applies, and it reads that the forum will be in the place where performance took place. We hope you enjoy this audio recap and look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.